News Talk. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. All right. It's time for this. No, it's not time for this. I thought we were doing competition time. We'll do that in a little while. What it is. It's time for more analysis of the All-Ireland Football Final. We went very heavy, as you can imagine, on the Tyrone between 7 and 8. We were talking to the Tyrone joint manager, Brian Dooher. Uh, we also heard from Brian McGuigan and Ricey McMenamin in there as well. You can get all of that on the OTB Sports app. Just subscribe to our GEA podcast and you'll get them straight to your phone every single day. But... To reflect on the final then, I'm joined by Mike Quirk and Billy Joe Padden. Good evening, lads. Good evening. Good evening. Mike, we might start with you and the Tyrone performance and what they got right. Did they do anything you weren't expecting on Saturday? Um, probably nothing hugely different that, that we didn't see in the semi-final, but they just did it a little bit better, I thought. You know, the Niall Morgan and his performance in goals has, has been something that, that captivated the last couple of games. You know, their kickouts, the length with which they went, you know, and targeted McKenna and different guys going going really long and so many kickouts and the joy they had off that, I think, is, you know, has, has the opportunity to be transformational for the game again, to see a new little nuance and, and how, how the kickout was so effective and so, you know, such a, an effective attacking weapon from. Um, I think there was there was lots of bits and pieces. I think the performance of their half-forward line, Sudden and Myler, I think, were just top drawer really really awesome performance from them uh, and and ultimately they were just that bit better they had the better finishers and and i think killian o'connor's absence eventually you know told and and, and mayo suffered because of it uh, billy joe let's go from back to front then almost with that tyrone performance and start with niall morgan it's just so interesting to watch morgan throughout a game he's this magnetic presence on the pitch nothing he seems to do is in any way half-hearted when he's coming 30 yards out of goal he's coming out for that ball with every single ounce of his being and the bravery you need to put yourself on the line like that when you've had setbacks like he had against Kerry in the league when it did, did go badly wrong and it's embarrassing and there's a humiliation to that that he stepped up again and again he makes the pitch an awful lot smaller it seems as well for Tyrone he's had a massive impact this season he has, and he's a, another, uh, if you're a goalkeeper or, or a free taker or a forward, uh, instant memory loss is a very useful trait to have. And you're right there. He put those mistakes of the past behind him very, very quickly. Hasn't in any way affected the way he plays the game. He's very, uh, he does plays on the front foot, likes to attack the ball as much as he can. And um, he's a really good footballer. Play. Obviously, it's been well uh, detailed now that he plays a lot of club football out the field. So he's very comfortable out the field in those situations, comfortable coming out to the 21. I think in the second half there, he came out for one great ball or, or maybe in the, uh, and that's 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 usually important. But I suppose more and, and it is interesting what, what Mike's saying about the kickouts. But I think that's maybe too much focus is put on a goalkeeper in relation to a kickout strategy. And I think you have to give the whole team, the management team, as well as Morgan, credit for the way that uh, that they were able to to deal with their own kickout and maybe doing it in a different way than many teams have been doing it in the last uh, couple of seasons. So talk about the way they've been doing it because they went long 16 times during the match. They won 12 of those long kickouts and it resulted in a goal in seven. What is it away from just the accuracy and the way the flight of the ball that he's able to ping it what is it that they're doing out the pitch that they're able to make such an impact off those long kickouts well i think they they they, they organize that they're landing in at that on the right matchup and and sometimes that ha- happens when you you suck maybe some of mayo's bigger players into an area that you're not going to kick the ball to and then you leave yourself with a matchup that you like the look of whether it's mckenna on on, on somebody else i think if you if you remember the mccurry goal i, I think it was in the hessian was the last mayo defender jumping for the ball with con kilpatrick now it was a brilliant catch but it was always going to be a matchup that you'd favor there for the throne midfielder hessian is more of a a wing player and not as tall so it's about um, finding those matchups on the field and that's quite sophisticated in terms of moving players around like that uh, and again being able to do that in a, a really long way away from your own goal and I think that's what Tyrone maybe did differently to to well not so much differently Monaghan have done it a lot with Began and, and Patton and Donegal going over the top as well um, but I think added to that to the fact when Monaghan and Tyrone were, or when Monaghan and Donegal are doing it they're looking to put somebody into space Whereas Tron are much more um, confident of playing it to a matchup and uh, ex- uh, saying that it w- they won't be beaten in a, in a clean possession. And if they don't win it clean, they'll be there to win, up, win the breaks. And I think it was one area where they improved dramatically um, from the Kerry game. 
in terms of that being able to pick up pick up breaks because they weren't weren't great against Kerry. Now Kerry, Kerry a more traditional style midfield, maybe the Mayo and, and better in the air in terms of David Moore and Jack Barry than than Mayo performed in that area on on Saturday evening. So maybe that was a factor also. But I think it was also going to be a point of emphasis for Tyrone considering how poorly they were in that area that they were going to improve there, and they definitely did. Mike, was there anything Mayo could have done even mid-game to change things to counter what Morgan was doing with the long kickouts? Uh, well, you would have assumed that they, you know, before the game ever started, that that they knew what was going to happen with those kickouts. I mean, it, it was it was interesting that they did go, you know, with the same number of or close to the same number of kickouts long against Kerry and, and lost three quarters of them. Whereas this time. They back themselves. If we if we do lose the ball in that area, then we've got a lot of bodies back here to help us defend and, and not concede scores. And if we do win it, we're more likely to get scores. Um, from Mayor's perspective, I, you could just see from the high behinds, you know, especially later when you watch the game back again, uh, that they did isolate McKenna a couple of times. They did have runners run into the wings and and trying to you know find that mismatch and then put it into a good area. Like from from the distance that Morgan's kicking that ball, his accuracy is obviously you know pretty solid, but it's still putting it into a general area. So. Uh, they just did a, a better job of, of you know finding that breaks, finding the improvements from the carry game because they didn't win the breaks and this time they were they were in the right areas at the right time and and it does if you have somebody that can kick the ball with that length and that accuracy and you have guys that are are solid around the jump and, and can control a tap or knock it down to somebody or catch it like Con, Con Kilpatrick did for that the goal uh, then it's a big advantage and 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 it's something I'm sure that a lot of teams would be looking at and saying okay they got a lot of joy out of it and and how can we how can we do this a little better. Watching the game, Mike, on Saturday, for the first 20 minutes, I thought, well, Mayo are starting to get at Tyrone. They're running at Tyrone and they're getting through the middle. And then after 20 minutes, you realise, well, actually, Tyrone are almost happy to let them do that because they were so comfortable and well-organised defensively and they were turning them over. And more and more as the game went on, they were turning them over in better positions. I think they ended with 1-7 from turnovers. Uh, How impressive was their transition in play to go from those turnovers to ending up and culminating with scores. And again, was that not something Mayo should have been expecting from Tyrone? Yeah, but it's one thing, expecting it, and, and, and then you see it in the flesh and, and the pace that they go with and the skill that they go with. I mean, you know, Mayo, Mayo started this game really, really well. Like, Aiden Shea wins the throw and puts a great ball to Tommy Conroy. Tommy Conroy puts his head down, smashes through Peter Hart and kicks a great score. Next kick out, Niall Morgan kicks it and it remains inside the 21 and they have a hot ball. So Mayo, Mayo got after a brilliant start and, and Tyrone weathered that and, and, and got their, you know got themselves in the right place but I, I just think the first score you look at the first score that, that, that Tyrone got and it was it was uh, um, uh, McNamee puts a great ball with his left leg to Hamzy and, and the outside of the right boot strokes it over the bar uh, and, and that's they, they just started to do that all day from, from mistakes that Mayo made their ability with Sludden and Myler in particular who were I just, I just thought were, were so so good on the wings the, the dynamism that they show up and down the field uh, they're just they're, they're really really high skilled as well it, it, it's not just athleticism it's not just getting back in numbers and tackling because for most of that 20 minutes you know I know Frank Burns was trying to help out and, and be an extra man at times but for a lot of that you know opening half and for a lot of the game it was man for man in a, a lot of occasions but they just did such a good job of, of you know getting up the field every time they won that ball back and, and, and to be fair to McCurry and these guys they were, they were able to find the finishes and put enough scores on the board. Mm. Uh, Billy Joe, the, the skill levels of the Tyrone players, particularly the finishing ability in comparison to the Mayo forwards, like, is that down to pure Gaelic footballing ability? Was it having half a second more on the ball because the Mayo defenders weren't getting tighter? Well, why was it that the scores always seemed to come that little bit easier for Tyrone? Well, I think it's a mixture of those things. I think you know, there's no doubt that the Tyrone players have a very high skill level um, and they executed really well. I think they're obviously going into an All-Ireland final with a lot of confidence coming off a, you know, a short break after a, after a big, big win where they, you know, particularly the defenders, you know, <laughs> had maybe a couple of shots, you know, a shot each and they all nailed their scores and, you know, Hampsey does it again. Um so that's that's hugely positive. Sludden's points were very very important for Tron in the in the early stages of the game. I think there probably is a bit of an element though that if you're getting your scoring opportunities maybe from quicker ball, from a counter attack, maybe from a quick switch of play, it's that bit easier. Uh, you have a bit more space to get a shot away, and you're more comfortable taking. Whereas a lot of the shots that Mayo were taking was following slow laboured build up where they were under pressure, and then maybe taking a, a shot. Um, 
under pressure again and, and poor execution. But I don't think there's a whole lot of... You, you can't make too many excuses for it because in terms of where Mayo were taking the shots from, in many instances, w- w- it was the right decision. It was the mm. right thing to do. Just pure, poor execution. And that's what's going to take up a long winter for James Horn, I guess, as to why that poor execution came home to roost on All-Ireland final day. Because when you do look at the stats, both sides had 19 shots from play. Tyrone scored 2-8. Mayo scored 7 points. Yeah, that's that's definitely going to be a, going to be a factor um, when you when he sits back and a, analyzes it. Um, I think you know it's difficult sometimes to uh, you, you don't want to blame players in, in any instance because they're putting their hands up, they're taking shots, they're they're showing that that responsibility. But uh, sometimes you just have to move it on when it's not your day and trying to f- try and find a fella that's in a bit of form. And unfortunately for, for Mayo, the last 20 minutes, there were not too many of forwards there that were really on top of their game that you could say, well, let's try and find him with the ball and 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 uh, and, and and make a shot for him. But uh, there was just too many players not not executing at, at a high enough level. Um, I think it will be a point of emphasis in terms of Mayo's attack and play for sure uh, over this the winter and, and moving forward. I think that it's a bit harsh to maybe be too critical maybe of Tommy Conroy or, or Ryan O'Donoghue considering how young they are in their, in their inter-county careers and when you look at the season as a whole they've definitely made positive strides in terms of their development I think what it'll be it'll be about adding to, to those players attributes maybe um, they'll obviously have to learn from this experience and trying to add a couple more players into that mix that uh, maybe have the skill set to, to be finishers more so than uh, middle third grinders and runners There's so much to analyse in it Mike but it does come down to how clinical Tyrone were with their goals in comparison to Mayo. Mayo had three good goal chances and the penalty and didn't take any of them, whereas Tyrone, well, maybe they had three chances, but they took two of them and they took them at exactly the right time. That in Even though it was five points in it, these were very small margins in the end. That bit of composure that was missing, like it cost Kerry, ended up costing Mayo. Yeah, and, it, and it's it's so strange that you look at Tyrone have only conceded one goal. But they've given up huge, huge goal chances. They, Kerry should have easily walked in two goals in the semi-final, and Tyrone come away and they score two, maybe fortunate enough goals themselves. Like I, I thought, Mayo had four, you know, including that penalty, four really proper, good goal chances. Like that Loftus one was a. Uh, like you have to finish that, whether it's you 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 side foot it in or you pick it up and you you slip it across or you finish yourself. But that's a that's a yeah a nailed on goal chance. Uh, the Aid Noche one was just crying out for a little dummy bounce, dummy solo, come back in, and again he had a runner off his shoulder that was either a slip pass or a finish. And they're easy goal chances for for guys at that level. They should be easy goal, goal chances for guys playing in All Ireland final as an inside forward. Uh, and Tommy Conroy's one, like I, I would be critical of the guy. He wins a ball great pace goes by a guy and 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 you know has a it's, he's a foot outside the post and, and it would have been a brilliant goal and a momentum shift and the same with Ryan O'Donnell with the with the penalty like there you know if you take two of those it's a different game and and again if Mayo these are the margins like that are just you know just so 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 narrow that Ryan O'Donnell who scores that goal and it's a if he scores that penalty and now they go up a point the whole momentum and energy of the stadium everything changes and 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 maybe Tyrone do go on to win the game but like you see the, how clinical you know McKenna was with that pass, and I thought McKenna, McKenna very similar to the Kerry game in the semi final. I thought McKenna did nothing in the semi final, but he finished it with two goals because he got about four touches and 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 had the crucial moments in the game. And similarly here after that, Con Kilpatrick, you know, no, he's out when he drives in, like just so good that the, the, the extra solo still, and uh, I, they had they had the guys out. Now we just seem to be losing you there Mike I will come back to Mike Quirk in a moment I think Billy Joe you're still with us I sure am hey, Momentum for Mayo is always so important at Crow Park there's always something that happens in a quarter final semi final final that just seems to ignite them for 10 minutes and, and that never happened it, the Mayo supporters never got fully enwrapped in the game because all those big moments went to begging it, like the penalty even it, is this just a big moment in the All Ireland final that goes wrong? Is it technique? Is it composure? Is it confidence? Is it the weight of expectation? Like, how do you explain it? Well, I suppose I know Ryan O'Donoghue well. He's from my own club. Um, 
I've seen him score a lot of penalties. He's a player with a lot of confidence. He's a player that can deal very, very well with, with mistakes in a game and responds very, very well to those. Uh, I think it's just one of those things that he had it in his mind that that's the way he was going to execute the penalty and he just pushed it too far to the right and it hits the post. Now, maybe Morgan is advancing off his line and maybe in the corner of his eye he sees that and feels he has to push it a bit further away and that's and that's why it uh, it, it goes it goes wide. Um I think it's just as simple as that. Penalties, as you know, it's it's about executing them. You know, there's no there should there's no points for style. All that all that matters is they hit the back of the net, and that one didn't. And uh, but you're right. I I think in that situation in the game, that if the penalty were to go in, and this is a big if, that um, that, that the way the Mayo team has been built over the last ten years, it's a team that builds on momentum, on key shifts in games and kind of builds up a head of steam. And they never got that opportunity because it, literally you could mention the four goal chances, you could mi- mish- uh, mention other you know, points chances that were missed mm. that never really, be, they were never able to create that, that momentum at any stage in the game. And that's very frustrating for Mayo Sports. And I'm sure it was extremely fr- frustrating for the team because they, they feed off that sort of, those sort of incidents in games. And you could imagine if, if Mayo were able to generate an incident, an incident like that that you would have had had Lee Keegan, Paddy Dirk and Kevin McLaughlin, Matty Ruan all reacting to it. But in all fairness to Tyrone, they were able to manage those situations very, very well and 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 were deserved winners and, and were able to keep Mayo at arm's length throughout that stage. Mm. It, it just feels as though, Mike, so much of this was predicted in advance that the game went the way a lot of pundits thought it would, including the impact of the Tyrone bench in comparison to the Mayo bench. Like, takes a lot of balls in a way I guess from the management team of Duher and Logan to hold back the Max Shanes of the world to hold back the Canavans and to trust that actually the game will still be in the balance when you bring them on and they can make the impact in the space of 15-20 minutes yeah and and they did obviously and and it is faith and trust for a new management team obviously and and it was a big big call after especially after Max Shane's impact in the semi-final he obviously would have been pushing hard to see if he could you know make a make a starting place but uh, he came in and, and and did what he what he's been doing a brilliant ball by Myler over the top after a great bit of movement and finished it lovely and uh, you know he had a big impact but the pace of kind of it, like Mayo Mayo didn't have that same impact you know Hessian gave it to him against Dublin but they didn't have they had nobody came off the bench and really lit it up in in the way that they had against Dublin and um, you know that was a big part of it obviously in the in the finish but. It was de- it's still down to how well you know Mayo or, or you know Tyrone took their chances and, and and Mayo didn't. And you can be analyzing it to death, like the difference you know that Killian O'Connor would have made to Mayo if he was there, a guy that was going to guarantee you seven eight points uh, and and was going to be a leader up front who was going to win ball win frees. And I and, and I do think that you know this year will benefit the likes of Ryan O'Donoghue and and Tommy Conroy and all these guys because. You're going to have you're going to plug in somebody like Killian O'Connor into this thing next year, who's going to give you those extra scores, and that's really what they were missing. They needed they needed that attacking you know point, to, and and they didn't have it. I hadn't realised until today that Aidan O'Shea has never scored in an All Ireland final, yeah. seven All Ireland final defeats, and okay, as usual, Billy Joe, he is the lightning rod for criticism when it comes to Mayo defeat, and so much of it again, unfortunately, has been way over the top on social media on his performance. So in the first half. Mayo seemed to make decent use of him and he got out in front of his marker three or four times he obviously kicked a bad wide but he was making an impact and so were Conroy and O'Donoghue that never seemed to happen in the second half for O'Shea why didn't they or why couldn't they use him as often in that role in the second half I think it was more so down to the way Tyrone were defending in, in the second half. Um, I, I think they had more bodies basically in, in front of him. And the ball he was winning in the first half was kind of a short ball out in front and he was making a straight run towards the ball carrier. Even in the first half, you have to say that Tyrone's tracking of the support runners was outstanding in all areas of the field. So it was very difficult for him to get a hand pass off to somebody, you know, traveling at pace past him and, and bearing down on goals. Um, he, it happened a few times and they won a few frees out of it. But Tyrone really stepped that up in the second half and they were able to keep the Mayo ball carriers that bit further out the field. So it was, and, and then the Mayo ball carriers didn't have the confidence to put a, high, a, you know, a, a longer ball into them. Um, and I think that's probably down to it wasn't the game plan because it was something that didn't really work against against Dublin the last day mm. out. I, I really feel sorry for, for Aidan O'Shea just in terms of what has happened in the last two games. I suppose I would be a person who 
I do not think he's very effective in the full forward line. I don't think it's a position that suits him. Um, but uh, when you consider that he did you know, a poor outing in the semi final against Dublin, it is always going to be very hard for him to have the confidence back to make a you know to have a real strong position without totally redefining his role. I would much prefer to have seen him playing in midfield and and kind of narrow down his his level of responsibility and his role and something that he's more comfortable with catching kickouts. He's an excellent tackler out in that area of the field. Um, and I think it's something that is quite clearly doesn't work when he plays in the full forward line for Mayo. And again, in the second half, it, it was totally ineffective. Yeah, I found myself, uh, Mike, in both the semi-final and final, sort of scanning the pitch a lot, going, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? You're constantly looking from. Is there something... James Horan could do to get more out of Aidan O'Shea? Should he be looking at the Tyrone model over the next couple of years and thinking there's an impact sub there for 20 minutes, but actually maybe as a starter, his time has come and gone? Sure, look, I mean, only Aidan O'Shea and, and James Horan will, will know that and, and they'll be judged by his performances and not by not by, um, not by us talking about it, I suppose. But it, like, I think Aidan O'Shea is, is always a lightning rod and it's a part of, I suppose, he puts himself out there you know, on social media, or whatever, and that, and that makes him a lightning rod for criticism when, whenever things don't go well. Uh, but there was a lot of other guys that didn't play anywhere near the standard that they're capable as well on that Mayo team. And and yeah, he's the guy that seems to be getting most of the flack and most of the, most of the criticism, probably because of that reason. Uh, but there's, there's, I'm sure, like there's, there's at least six or seven other guys that that were equally culpable in, in terms of their poor performance. Uh, but Aidan O'Shea in this game, I think he struggles in, you know, against the likes of Dublin or against the likes of a Brian Fenton or, or a James McCarthy because he just can't keep up with their wheels. But in midfield in this game, I thought either Con, uh, Con Fitzpatrick or, or, um, or, or Kennedy weren't going to burn him with pace and he would have been more effective in that, in that area for me in this game because neither of those guys have the wheels to really, really punish him. So, uh, yeah, that was a place for him, but... It, I think it's the matchup that they need to find because when he went in full forward, you just couldn't. They didn't. They didn't know how to use him, how to how to get the most out of him, and and that's been a recurring theme for the last ten years, really. It did seem Mike that Tyrone got their matchups just right. Myler and Durkin that they were able to get at those real pivotal Mayo players, and maybe with the exception of Lee Keegan, not too many of the key Mayo men really stood out due to what Tyrone were doing. No, they didn't, uh, and and that's again credit to credit to Tyrone and, and and the way that they were able to perform. I thought they had look, they had the bigger personalities in the game. They had the guys that were were really really pushing and looked like they were going to be you know the guys in contention for man of the match and all that stuff. And and again, I keep going back, you know, McGeary, the guys in that middle eight, uh, you know, for for uh, Tyrone. While I mentioned the two midfielders weren't you know incredibly dynamic, I thought they did a huge amount of work mm. around the field, negating you know breaking things up, getting a hand in here, tackle, uh, you know just to really effective without being outstanding and I think they had more of those guys who, who were scoring your sevens out of tens whereas the male guys were getting your fives uh, and, and again I keep going back to it I think the fact that you know they were man for man and a lot of the a lot of the Mayo players, it didn't give Mayo uh, by not playing a permanent sweeper. It didn't give Mayo an extra body to leave back in front of their full back line either. So it forced everybody in Mayo to have to pick up a guy as well because that's what Tyrone were doing, and and I think that played into their advantage. Like that's how you know that ball onto McShane was on straight away because there wasn't an extra sweeper in front of him. There was the ball into into McKenna that 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 uh, McCurry had the goal chance in the first half. That was on because. Everybody was picked up man to man. So I think I think Tyrone came and were really positive in the way that they approached the game, um, and that that led to I suppose that led to eventually them getting over the line. Yeah, and the way you're talking, Mike, uh, like for the management team, Brian Duhar and Fergal Logan in their first season, like nobody quite knew what was going to happen when Mickey Hart left. There was definitely a feeling that maybe Mickey Hart had stayed on two or three years too long. That there was more in this Tyrone team than they've been allowed produce over the last couple of seasons, but. Considering where they were 11, 12 weeks ago, conceding 6-15 against Kerry, to only concede one goal during the championship where they've got to go and be Cavan, the reigning champions, Donegal, Monaghan, everything that went on with the COVID, whatever people believe about that, there's no doubt it was a massive distraction for them. And to turn up, and it seems, get it pretty much spot on on All-Ireland final day. This is right up there with the great managerial achievements we've seen in recent times. Absolutely, yeah, a hundred percent. You couldn't, you couldn't, but be impressed by by both of them and by the performance of their team. And and it's it's great. I think, you know, maybe for years we weren't seeing enough of their of their personality. With you know, there was disagreements with broadcasters and different things. And 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 it was like they were they were being stifled a little bit, maybe on the field and and as well off it. That you know, we 
we should be able to know who these guys are a little bit and, and have more of a, uh, not not their personal stuff, but just have, you know, know their personality when they play, know, le- allow them to speak after, do, let them do their interviews if they want to do it. And and I just think you've uh, there's a much more positive feel about this team um, and some of the footballers that we didn't really know much about two years ago or, or last year. And now you're looking at them saying, these guys could be here for the next seven, eight years and they could be, really really pushing the, the Dublins the Kerrys the Mayos to, to, to battle it out for, for a couple of titles in the next decade and I don't think that's over the top to say that because the age profile of that team is is in a really good place and I think you you have you have guys in key positions that have so much ability and so much skill and talent and drive uh, and then again your first year do a Logan are on the pigs back for the next five years no one's going to put them under any pressure so they're I think they're in a, a really really good place obviously and and from where they were five weeks ago where where they were out of the championship and then forfeited the semi-final uh it's an amazing transition from that to the top of the hill well Brian McGuigan was on a little bit earlier and he was saying the expectation around Tyrone is that this team will go on and win many more All-Irelands that it feels Tyrone football's in a very good place with everybody pulling in the right direction club Tyrone are finding the finances to make sure the senior team don't want for anything. They've got a brilliant setup in Garvahi. They've underage talent coming through. Uh, in terms of what's next for this Tyrone side, Billy Joel, again, from where we were three months ago, where nobody was talking about Tyrone, to now saying that this is a team that will go and compete with Dublin and Kerry and win more All-Irelands over the next five, six years. Is, is that what you're expecting as well from them? Yes, but I think that's that should have that should always be the case with Tyrone, considering the the level they've you know since they've made the breakthrough in 03, they've always had you know loads and loads of talented footballers, uh, you know excellent underage, you know as deep a squad every year as any county in Ireland in terms of one to thirty. They could nearly use any of those players, and again that was evident on Saturday. So yes, this extra bit of confidence that that will give them of winning an All Ireland early in their career for many of them. Uh, and pretty, particularly when you get a player like McKenna back from Australia and the lift that, w- that would give a squad to say that somebody would choose to leave a professional uh, sporting lifestyle to come back and compete with you at this level well that's going to give everyone else a boost and um, and they, they always as I said they always have a couple of really good underage players that they can add add to a squad at, at any stage so yeah there's like that, that's no surprise there for me they're going to be there competing for sure I suppose maybe just you know, Kerry are going to improve. I think Kerry will learn a lot from from the what happened to them this season. I think they still obviously have a lot of good good players, and 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 Dublin also. Like you know, if you ask me, and I suppose I was lucky enough to be in a lot of the games this year. You know, the first twenty five minutes of football by Dublin against Mayo was still the best bit of football I saw all year. So if they can see that out and and be more be more consistent through seventy minutes, well then they're going to be tough to beat for the years to come as well. And what about Mayo then, Billy Joe? Because in a way, I don't think even too many Mayo people expected them to reach back-to-back All-Ireland finals over the last couple of years. But we're entering another winter where you'd wonder about the future of a squad player now like Cullen Boyle, Kevin McLaughlin, maybe even Lee Keegan. You see the pictures, the brilliant pictures of Lee Keegan uh, with his child on all the papers and more on the way. That like This is a team that that generation is moving on quickly. Do you expect them to be there, thereabouts? Or is there a sense, actually, there's a couple of chances here they mightn't have expected and they'll have huge regrets that they didn't take them? You can't pick and choose when you find yourself in an All-Ireland yeah. final, that's for sure. And, and when you're there, you have to you have to win them and, and Mayo haven't been able to do that. But I think you're right that in some, it, it, it might have come too soon for, for many of the players and when you add in the Killian O'Connor injury and, and that's never ideal. But in terms of the older players, like Lee Keegan has shown that he has still so much to offer if he wants to do that, and that's his own personal decision. I really hope he does because he's abs- absolutely outstanding. I think the focus for Mayo in general will be will be to retain as many of these experienced players as possible, just to try and help the young players that have you know have you know dipped their toe in the water uh, as such, and the young players that we haven't seen that are coming as well. So there's two or three others to to be added to that squad, and it'll be helpful if you're there learning from Colin Boyle and, and Lee Keegan and and Kevin McLaughlin. So yeah. that that will be important. But I think there will need to be an emphasis on not so much changing the way Mayo approach uh, the putting a team together or the way they play football, but you know, James's first couple of seasons back as in a second run, he's, you know, focused on getting those athletes into the team because you need that. There's no doubt you need that running ability and physicality for Crow Park. But I think now what we really need to look for is trying to add a few bodies in the full back line, add a few bodies in the full forward line that you can have a bigger spread there that maybe even you have a situation like you mentioned earlier on where you have a couple of players on the bench that are 
have confidence they can get you a score particularly coming on to tired defenders and um, then you have a situation where you have a much deeper squad and, and give you a better opportunity to take in those big scoring chances late in games Just I briefly Billy Joe does he need goal. to add bodies on the sideline because you think of Mayo over the last decade they've had some big personalities in that dressing room some some really strong figures like Kieran Shanahan uh, Kieran Shannon, Keen O'Neill Donny Buckley you don't get the sense at the moment in Mayo with that backroom team that those kind of personalities are having an impact on James Horan, that he's making virtually all the decisions. Well, I don't know exactly what's going on in the in the camp or in the in the setup. Look, James has picked a backroom team that he's obviously very happy with, he's confident with. I suppose up to Friday evening, you would have said they were doing an excellent job considering the development they've done with young players. And sometimes maybe we react a bit too quickly to, to a, re- a result. The Mayo management team have done a whole lot of good work this season and and last. All right, there are things that I'm sure that they would do differently if they had Saturday back. There are things that they will still be able to identify to work on. I suppose it will be up to James to see if he needs extra personnel in there to help him uh, in relation to any deficiencies they may have in terms of whether it's a tactical approach, whether it's more defensive play or forward play. Um, and, and that's up for him to decide. I think that he has proven as a manager and himself that he can you know, develop really, really good players. And, uh, and I suppose he deserves the right to go on and see where he can take it from here. All right, Billy Joe Padden, great stuff as always. Mike Quirk, thanks for joining us. No matter. All right, in a few minutes' time, we're going to break down why Galway secured their second All-Ireland Camogie title of the last three years. But first, here's your chance to win 20K. How would you spend 20,000 20, euro? The 20K giveaway on News Talk. So €20,000, what would you do with it? It could be all yours this Friday and all you got to be due to win a chance of winning is to answer this question. What country are ABBA from? Is it A, Sweden, or B, South Africa? Text the word PLAY followed by A or B to 57599. Entries cost 250 plus your standard message rate. You must be over 18 to enter. You're playing across the Go Loud network of stations. You'll find full terms and conditions on Newstalk.com. Get your entry in by 3 o'clock this Friday and you could be calling give you 20k on Friday afternoon answer within five rings and the cash is all yours for your chance to win 